21st century quals. Today we are taking a look at Johannes IV, who was emperor of Ethiopia and ruler of Tigray from 1871 to his death in 1889. Johannes IV was a strong progressive ruler, but he spent most of his time repelling military threats from Egypt, Italy, and the Mahdists of the Sudan. The second in command in Ethiopia was Ras Alula, who was the king's general. He was a favorite of King Johannes IV, and he was also a childhood friend. The author A.B. Wilde, who wrote the book Modern Abyssinia, stated that Ras Alula had the reputation of being a good general and a skilled tactician. Both the Egyptians and the Italians learned that he and his soldiers were not to be trifled with. Johannes IV attempted to unify his kingdom from a religious point of view, but it did not go so well, as he faced a lot of resistance from Muslims who naturally didn't want to convert to Christianity. By the mid-1870s, Egypt had encroached on Ethiopia to the east and the south, but Ethiopian forces in which verged as an anti-Muslim crusade won decisive victories in the mountainous country of the north in 1875 and 1876. The next aggressor was Italy, who began to expand inland toward the province of Tigray, only to be soundly defeated by Johannes in 1887. The third aggressor were Mahdist forces who invaded Ethiopia. They pillaged and burnt churches and carried off many as slaves. In, reti in retaliation, Johannes invaded the Sudan but was unfortunately killed in the Battle of Metema in March 1889. The Emperor Johannes, who led his army from the front, had shrugged off one bullet wound to his hand, but a second one lodged in his chest, fatally wounding him. He was carried back to his tent by the officers where he died that night. Well, the forces of the Mahdist commander overtook Johannes' officers when they were escorting their emperor's body to safety, and the Mahdist forces captured the body of the dead emperor, and they proceeded to cut off his head. Now let's take a look at the achievements of Johannes IV. He was the first Ethiopian ruler to open a consulate abroad in London, UK. He hired foreign physicians, craftsmen, and army trainers, and he was very pro-vaccine at a time when his kingdom was being ravaged by smallpox. And it is even said that he took the vaccine publicly to inspire confidence among his people that they could trust foreign medicine. He built clinics in Adwa and Gonda. He introduced flamels and supply depots in order to relieve the peasants from supplying provisions to his fighting forces. Johannes IV was likewise the first Ethiopian monarch to request the repatriation of artifacts that had been looted from his kingdom. He was grieved in particular at the loss of two items that had been seized by the British. One was a manuscript of the Cabra Negast or the Glory of Kings, while the other was an icon of the Christ with the Crown of Thorns, which had for centuries been carried by the Ethiopian soldiers on campaign. A General Gordon reports after a visit to the Emperor that no women are allowed within 300 yards of his palace and he cuts off the lips of the smokers of tobacco and the noses of the snuffers. Well, the author A.B. Wilde was not pleased with that comment and he corrected him saying, Johannes was not as cruel. He did not like the smell of tobacco and slightly scarred the noses and the lips of those who used it in his presence or near him. Until the slight wound healed, they could not use the tobacco. It is said that Johannes also wasn't a big fan 
of missionaries. The story is told by the Italian traveler Gustavo Bianchi that on the arrival of a party of Swedish missionaries, Johannes asked them, Are there Jews in your country? To which the visitors replied, Yes, your majesty. And so Johannes asked them, And through what country did you pass to reach mine? To which they responded, Well, we went through Egyptian territory. And then Johannes asked, Then why did you not stay in your own country or in Egypt to baptize the people there? We have no need of this here. Also with the conversation with William Winstanley, who was the author of A Visit to Abyssinia, An Account of Travel in Modern Ethiopia, Johannes remarked, Foreigners, I cannot say I love or trust, but I owe much to the English, and your Queen Victoria is, I know, a sincere Christian. Why do foreign nations come here? Christianizing Christians. They make trouble in my country and are not wanted. Are there no men who are pagans to be converted? In the history of my nation, the preachers of foreign religions have filled a bloody and disastrous page. We are Christians like yourselves, with different forms. You represent a Muslim government, and I find Western nations profess a great interest in Egypt. Why do not your Western missionaries convert this, your friends, to Christianity? In conclusion, we might ask, was Johannes IV too close to the foreigners, especially to the British, seeing that he collaborated with them, and thus the British were able to defeat Emperor Tawadros, who had at one point imprisoned British missionaries. Was the emperor against religious freedom by imposing his religion on everyone else? Or was he simply an emperor who wanted the best for his people fueled by a deep patriotism and a deep love for his country over to you friends <laughs>